Hurricanes, cyclones, and typhoons are the same meteorological phenomenon. A storm system characterized by a closed circulation around a low pressure center that produces strong winds and heavy rain. Scientists call these storms differently depending on where they occur. When a storm forms in the North Atlantic, the Caribbean, and the Northeast Pacific, it is called a hurricane. In the Northwest Pacific, it is called a typhoon. If it occurs in the Southeast Indian Ocean or the Southwest Pacific, it is called a tropical cyclone. The parts of a hurricane are Hurricanes can be classified into categories according to the Saffir-Simpson scale. The scale was developed in 1969 and introduced to the general public in 1973. It is a five-level scale, based on wind speed, that describes the potential damage to buildings. Neither the amount of precipitation nor the location is taken into account, meaning that a Category 3 hurricane affecting a large city may cause much more damage than a Category 5 hurricane affecting an unpopulated area. The five intensity categories are Category 1, 119 to 153 kilometers per hour or 73 to 95 miles per hour, no damage to building structures. Category 2, 154 kilometers per hour to 177 kilometers per hour, or 96 to 110 miles per hour, damage to roofs, doors, and windows. Category 3, 178 to 209 kilometers per hour, or 111 to 130 miles per hour, structural damage in small buildings. Category 4, 210 to 250 kilometers per hour, or 131 to 155 miles per hour. Widespread damage to protective structures, collapse of roofs on small buildings, flooding of inland areas. Category 5, 251 to 400 kilometers per hour, or 156 to 240 miles per hour. Winds of 300 kilometers per hour can tear trees and even homes from their foundations. Mass evacuation may be required. One of the most famous hurricanes was Hurricane Katrina in 2005, Category 5. An earthquake, also called a tremor, a seismic movement, or a telluric movement, is a sudden and temporary shaking of the Earth's crust. The most common ones are caused by the activity of geological faults. The point of origin of an earthquake is called the focus or hypocenter, from where it propagates in the form of seismic waves. The point on the Earth's surface that is closest to the hypocenter, where seismic waves reach first, is called the epicenter. Depending on its magnitude and origin, an earthquake can cause displacements of the Earth's crust, landslides, tsunamis, or volcanic activity. Various scales are used to measure the energy released by an earthquake, including the Richter scale, which is the most well-known and used by the media. The Richter scale, also known as the Local Magnitude Scale, is a logarithmic scale that assigns a number to quantify the energy released by an earthquake. World Seismology uses this scale to determine the strengths of earthquakes with a magnitude between 2.0 and 6.9. As shown in this reproduction of a seismogram, the P, primary, waves are recorded before the S, secondary, waves. The time elapsed between both instances is delta T. This value and that of the maximum amplitude, A, of the S waves allowed Charles Francis Richter to calculate the magnitude of an earthquake as m sub l equals log of a delta t cubed over 1.62, where a equals amplitude of the waves in millimeters taken directly from the seismogram, delta t equals time in seconds from the beginning of the p waves to that of the s waves, m sub l equals local magnitude scale. At the beginning of the 21st century, traditional magnitude scales such as m sub l were considered obsolete by most seismologists, being replaced by a more physically meaningful measure called seismic movement, m sub w. Although the media often confuses scales, when referring to current telluric events, it is considered incorrect to say that an earthquake was of magnitude greater than 7.0 on the Richter scale since earthquakes with a magnitude greater than 6.9 have been measured since 1978 with the moment magnitude seismological scale, as the latter is a scale that better discriminates extreme values.
An advantage of the moment magnitude scale is that it does not saturate near high values. Unlike other scales, it does not have a value above which all the largest earthquakes reflect very similar magnitudes. Another advantage of the scale is that it coincides and continues with the parameters of the Richter scale. For these reasons, the moment magnitude scale is the most commonly used by seismologists to measure and compare large earthquakes. Despite the above, the Richter scale is the most popular in the press. It is common for the press to report the magnitude of an earthquake on the Richter scale when it has actually been measured on the moment magnitude scale, which is defined as m sub w equals two thirds log m sub zero minus 16 one. M sub zero is a quantity that combines the rupture area and fault offset with a measure of rock strength by the following equation, M sub zero equals mu a epsilon, where mu equals modulus of formation of the rocks involved in the earthquake, a equals rupture area along the geological fault where the earthquake occurred, epsilon equals the average displacement of a. Earthquakes are classified as The largest release of energy that has been measured was during the earthquake that occurred in the city of Valdivia, Chile, on May 22, 1960, which reached a moment magnitude of 9.5. A tsunami, also called a tidal wave, is a complex event involving a group of waves in a body of water with great energy and variable size that occurs when a large mass of water is displaced vertically by some extraordinary phenomenon. For example, Earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, underwater nuclear detonations, landslides, meteorite impacts, among others. Unlike normal ocean waves produced by the wind and tides, which are generated by the gravitational attraction of the sun and the moon, a tsunami is generated by the displacement of water. It is estimated that 75% of tsunamis are caused by earthquakes. Due to the Ring of Fire, the most active earthquake zone on the planet, the Pacific Ocean is the place most affected by tsunamis, and in particular, Japan is the country most affected by tsunamis, due to its geographical location. The energy of a tsunami depends on its height, its wavelength, and the length of its front. The Weigel scale is a graded scale that measures the intensity of tsunamis. Proposed in 1970, the Weigel scale grades range from 0 to 4, with each grade implying different damages. Grade 0. The maximum flood level is 1 to 1.5 meters and does not cause damage. Grade 1, houses are flooded and boats are destroyed. Grade 2, human deaths occur, houses and boats are destroyed. Grade 3, damage extends along 400 kilometers of the coastline. Grade 4, damage extends along 500 kilometers of the coastline. Regarding the height of the waves, we have the deadliest tsunami in history occurred in the Indian Ocean on December 26, 2004. This tsunami was triggered by a magnitude 9.3 earthquake that generated waves up to 30 meters high. A tornado is a column of air with high angular velocity, the lower end of which is in contact with the earth and the upper end with a cumulonimbus cloud. Cumulonimbus clouds are clouds of great vertical development internally formed by a column of warm and humid air that rises in the form of a rotating spiral. It is the most energetically dense atmospheric cyclonic phenomenon on Earth, although it is of small extension and short duration from seconds to more than an hour. The Fujita Pearson scale is a scale for measuring and classifying the intensity of a tornado. It is based on the destruction caused to man-made structures and vegetation. It is the most universally accepted. It was developed in 1971. Note that this scale is not based on the size, diameter, or speed of the tornado, but is based on the damage caused by it. Most tornadoes occur in the central and eastern United States, in the area known as Tornado Alley. Tornado Alley is a colloquial term used in the United States to designate a large area of the country where the best conditions for tornado formation are found in areas of Texas, Louisiana, Oklahoma, Kansas, South Dakota, Iowa, and Nebraska. 
The Great Plains area is relatively flat, and this allows the cold polar air of Canada to meet the warm tropical air of the Gulf of Mexico. When these two air masses meet, most of the most powerful tornadoes form. The 2011 Joplin, Missouri tornado was part of the May 2011 United States tornado outbreak, classified as F5 and causing 158 direct deaths. A volcanic eruption. A volcanic eruption is a geological phenomenon characterized by the violent emission onto the Earth's surface by a volcano of lava and or tephra, ash, lapilli, volcanic bombs, and volcanic blocks, accompanied by volcanic gases. There are three different types of eruptions. The most commonly observed are magmatic eruptions, which involve the decompression of gas within magma that propels it outwards. Phreatomagmatic eruptions are another type, caused by the compression of gas within magma. The third eruptive type is the phreatic eruption, which is driven by the superheating of steam on contact with magma. These eruptive types often do not show magmatic release, but instead cause granulation of existing rock. The Volcanic Explosivity Index VEI, is a scale, from 0 to 8, for measuring the strength of volcanic eruptions. It works in a similar way to the Richter scale for earthquakes, as each interval of value represents a tenfold increase in magnitude. It is a logarithmic scale. The vast majority of volcanic eruptions have a VEI between 0 and 2. Scientists use the VEI to measure the magnitude of volcanic eruptions. It records how much volcanic material is ejected, how much the eruption is, and how long it lasts. An increase of 1 indicates an eruption 10 times more powerful. An increase of 2 is 100 times more powerful. The 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens was one of the most catastrophic volcanic eruptions of the 20th century, with a VEI equal to 5. The explosion was the largest of all those that occurred in the United States. This was the map of the zonal distribution of ash. Natural disasters cannot always be avoided, but their effects can be reduced. Mathematical models are tools that allow us to analyze and predict natural phenomena. They are used to study the relationship between variables and understand how nature behaves.